first question will be Ira over to your right. Hey, Coach, uh, looking back at the, the last play, do you reevaluate you know, the call and then also, um, I guess, talking to the players about what happened after the catch, like what kind of answers could they give you? Yeah, I mean, not great answers, but, you know, just going back to the last play, listen, you know, we didn't want to be in that position as it was, but that's how the game came down to it. I uh, thought our guys played well, but at the end of the game, you know, clock's rolling, it's a dead clock. You know, we got four down on the field and it was like, all right, let's, we're rushing the passer really well, you know, so we kept four down rush, knew we'd try to get the ball out, try to get the corners back as far as we could. They got back to about 10, want to get them back more, had a post on the overlap, you know, and became more of a one-on-one -on -one play than I wanted it. Wanted it more of a two-on-one play, but it happened. You know, got to make a tackle at the end to try to win the game there and didn't, you know, so disappointed on the result of that play for sure. Adam, on that play, if there's, say, five seconds or four seconds left, what changes in the defense? Because Instead of six? Yes. Yeah, Does it change I, you know, anything at all? In you know, I went through that because it's, it's still a field goal game. You know, so you're trying to make the decision. You know, they got a timeout left. So you're, you're always trying to make that decision, the heat. Okay, is it going to be more of a chunk play with a timeout for field goal to tie? Right? Or is it going to be a shot to the end zone? In my mind, going through it, it's like, okay, he can't reach the end zone if we rush four. Like, that's not happening. We'll get there before he can get the ball off 60 yards. So, you know, let's, let's be four-man rush, get the pressure, back the guys up so they'll see the ball thrown, overlap it with the safety, and put yourself in a position to get the ball down. You know, that's really what it came down to. You know, and so it went through my mind, listen, can they get 30 or 40 in – time out it for a field goal and right in my mind I'm like I don't think that's what's going to happen right so it right away it went to all right listen four down rush back them up overlap post let's go play and that's really what it came down to next will be Gene over to your right. and outside of those <clears throat> excuse me outside of those last couple of drives I mean you guys had held them to one offensive drive effectively the whole game what happened you guys just started to press where they wore out with the last two drives they moved it at will up and down the field yeah well I mean start out on the second to last drive I mean it's third and 12 and we have a penalty and it's a second and 20 and we have a, a, a lapse and an MA on a, on a ball that we've covered all night. Then we get them and we pick the ball off on a third down. We're on the bench and it's an overviewed targeting call, you know, so, you know, that was that drive. So, you know, were there breakdowns? Yeah. Penalties and in a, a crucial second and 20 lapse in judgment. And then a penalty on a third down when we pick the ball off to get off the field. You know, so then we go back out, we stop them, score, then we come back on the field in a two-minute drive. So, you know, that's what it was. Um, definitely, you know, thought we had them stopped on numerous times in that second to last drive. And for whatever reason, we didn't, you know. Um, so, yeah, disappointing, the last two for sure. But up until then, I thought we played really solid football. Adam, sorry, my last question about this play, but oh, when, the, when the snap is called, you have nine guys within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Would you have rather those DBs, you said you want them to back up. Should they have been 20 yards off the line of scrimmage? Was the, was the community, and why weren't they, I guess? Yeah, just caught in the moment, you know, trying to get, you know, there's a portion that you're still trying to be on the routes, you know what I mean? And I so, you know, it's in like a 10 crossover run, staying on top of the routes, and all of a sudden the ball's in the air, and now it becomes, do I play the ball, do I play the guy type of decision, Corey, is really what it came down to. I mean, in a perfect world, you want to enter at a downhill angle and be deep enough that you go play the football, you know, but that thing tempos and, you know, just ball gets thrown and you get kind of in between. And then the post guy's there and it's like, is he making the play? Am I making the play? And, you know, stuff that you probably, probably happens a lot in the course of a practice and just didn't happen Saturday night. And please ask all the questions you want. Don't feel like, hey, I can't ask that one again. Like, we're all in this to try and make sure that, number one, it doesn't happen again, and then why so everybody understands. All right, one more. Um, I, on that play. Don't keep saying one more if there's another one. Like, <laughs> the, uh, this everything's room's tilting over this way right now. <laughs> everything's going to be magnified on, on a play like that. And so, and Coach Norvell addressed it. He said that there were some guys not playing with ultimate effort on that last play. Has that been an issue, or did it show up at just the worst possible time? Not that those guys maybe could have made the play, but just has it been an issue at all before? Yeah, I think the definition of the way we've been playing the first two games have been really outstanding effort. Um, now, you watch that play, and you know, obviously it's a ball thrown. So, I mean, you, you have two guys within five yards to make the play, right? Well, 
we've had two guys within five yards to make a play, and we've had nine other guys chasing the football on numerous plays. You know, I think on that one, it's a little bit, clock's running, everybody's moving, you want to be really cool in the moment, ball gets thrown, and we had a couple guys just kind of like watching the ball, which typically has not happened throughout the first two games. You know, then the ball gets caught, and you know, so yeah, there were a couple guys that were close enough that, you know, if they accelerate, could they get involved in the play? Probably. Um, and that that's coached, you know, and that's talked about. Um, so yes. All right, we'll come to the left side for Vernon. Tilting it over a little bit. Oh, playing the ball, I know some that you guys have worked on with the defensive backs, all camp and, and last couple of weeks. But it seems like in the first two games that playing the ball in there has kind of been inconsistent, I guess. Mm -hmm. What can you guys do? Uh, is there anything more time that could be spent on in practice to kind of correct that a little bit? Yeah, I think, you know, you know, going back, you know, obviously the Notre Dame game, there were a couple that, you know, you want to have more production. You know, Saturday night happened to be the last play. There weren't many over-the-top throws at all in the game, um, at least contested ones, right? The PIs were comeback throws, you know, where maybe we were on the back shoulder and it, but, you know, the one that showed up was obviously the one that showed up. Um, but it's definitely, I mean, ball drills, taking away the ball, in phase, like they're, I mean, it's corner 101. Um, it's stuff that we work every day. We'll continue to work it. Um, just like all things we do, we try to find better ways or we work the personnel in a way to make sure we're getting the production the way we want. But when you look out there, the guys that are on the field, the ones that we think are the best ones at that moment. And uh, we'll continue to evaluate it, but also continue to evaluate how we're coaching it. Uh, Coach Norvell, I think, talked about maybe a shock factor on that final play after that pass is caught. I know you said getting caught up in the moment, kind of similar, I guess. So you, do you agree with the assessment of maybe a shock factor? And I mean, what can you kind of do about that after the fact to make sure it doesn't happen again? Because it's probably a pretty troublesome here to, thing to see or hear. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's a lot of different scenarios at the end of the football game that you're always, you're not going to work on every one every week, but you're constantly working on two minute. You're constantly working on last plays. You're constantly working on four minute. And it's just things. And so make practice real, right? That's something we preach all the time of whether it's, the way you play, first down, two minute, whatever it is, last play of the game, you're always trying to, in the moment on a Tuesday or on a Thursday, you're trying to bring that emotion to Saturday because that's how you are able to replicate it. And so, you know, that obviously didn't happen on that last play. And it's something that we're going to put them in the position again this week and try and make it better. Uh, Jermaine obviously uh, played very well again uh, Saturday night. Uh, when you have someone like that who's excelling so much individually, is there anything you can do within the defense to scheme to exploit him even more so? Yeah, and we're, we're doing it now, and um, it'll be constant, you know, whether it's, you know, him and, you know, we're using Amari Gaynor on the line of scrimmage a little bit more too to try to help um, in that pass rush. But I, I think the pass rush as a whole has been – you know, one of the bright spots here early on, you know, I think the way we're playing up front in the run game, um, our tackling has improved, and for sure our pass rush is definitely something that, I mean, it, it's come light years right now, but it's something we got to continue, um, and it's got to be part of our defense that we lean on. Adam, confidence is such a big deal for a cornerback. Well, I guess in all athletes, really, but with somebody like Jarvis, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a big mistake he made on, on a big stage. How do you how do you move forward? How do you coach somebody like that to get his confidence up? Because you can't play that position without it. Absolutely. And the confidence comes with the work. I mean, and when you go out there and you work at it and you put yourself in that position to do everything you can to be the best you can be, once you do that, confidence is coming and, and, it, and it sticks. Um, there's no fake confidence to it, right? So I can go make a play and maybe that'll last a little bit, but if I'm not doing the everyday work where you feel like you deserve the result, right? Then when it doesn't happen, you're angry about it and you go put in more time and you keep working and that will come. Um, and so that's the message. Could you uh, talk about Wake Forest offense, particularly that the, the way they run the football is a little bit different. Um, what challenges do they present? Yeah, I mean, it's very, I think when you say the way they run the football, you just chum with the mesh point with the, you know, and listen, RPO has been around for a while. And so what they've done is, 
you know, why do you do that? You try to undress the different levels of the defense. And, you know, obviously their philosophy is a little bit different than some people in that the mesh lasts a little bit longer, right? How does that affect what you guys Just the timing of it all. You know, I think you, know, you still have gaps and you still have pass fits that you got to fit, but now the timing may change a little bit. You know, I think, you know, up front, it gives you a little bit chance to be able to knock mm. some plays back and get involved in the quarterback, which is something that they have to deal with too. So, you know, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, obviously, there's a little bit unique because you don't see it as much. Um, but I do think it's brought in some um, proactive thinking for a lot of offensive staffs, I think, because of the way they've had success with it. Adam, it looked like once or twice there were some issues getting the defensive play call in in a timely manner. It looked like at least once Jacksonville State took advantage of that with a quick snap. What are you guys doing to address that so this obviously doesn't become an issue? Yeah, in the I think, you know, there are tempos that happen consistently throughout games, and then there are teams that aren't that way, and then they get on the ball quickly. You know, and just with our signal callers, when the signal gets in, of making sure it gets in, and they understand that they don't second guess what they saw for a second or third signal to make sure it's what they saw. Trust your eyes the first time, get down, and be able to get set. Go to Adlon in the back right corner. Renardo, Jarian, and, and Miko, I think are guys that I would assume probably have really high upside for you, but weren't able to practice a lot in the off season. Is it the hope that these guys, the more they play, that there will be a whole different looking sort of back end the way you guys are performing? Yeah, I think, you know, Renardo played the most he's played since the Carolina game. Um, so that's a positive, you know, because if they're playing more in the game right now, it means they're practicing more. Um, so within him, I think he is on the uprise. Um, you know, Jarion had some issues during camp from a physical standpoint, so there just wasn't the time to get him ready. Um, this hopefully will be more of a complete week for him. Um, you know, and then Miko, you know, he's, he's coming off something and we're continuing work, but I got all the confidence in the world in the work that Miko will put in. You were, you've been able to get Kevin in both Kevin Knowles in both games, and then uh, um, Shaheem has got in a little bit in this past game. Looked like maybe a little over aggressive on at least one play. But what what is it? What have these first couple games been for those guys to just get few game action? Yeah, Kevin's has been really clean in his performance. Um, he had two plays specifically at the end of the Jacksonville State game. One got called back on a penalty that he was. Um, playing a little bit out of his comfort zone, but the moment's not too big for Kevin. You know, I, th I think Kevin has taken the reps that we've given him and he's continued to get better with it. You know, this was Shaheem's first run. Um, we told him he was gonna play. He got in the third series, um, you know, gave us some reps, you know, some were cleaner than others, uh, but it was a necessary step in him. You know, wanna get him more snaps, but his snaps come out there right now um, with the second unit. And I think as long as our, our thought is to push that acceleration with him. Um, so we're hoping the development goes quickly so that you can see him out on the field more on game days. Kalen's obviously going to miss the first half. I mean, how do you do that as a defensive coach? Will it be you plan two guys to play? Or you plan on bringing them in the second half? Or how will that work out? Well, you know, we dealt with that in game one with Jamie Robinson. So it's something that is not new to us this year, you know. So, Kalen will get, he'll get reps. Um, obviously, the reps, the way we're going to do it is the reps will be indicated based off of how he's going to play in the game too, right? So, first half, he's not available. Um, so, his reps in practice will basically get cut in half just so we get the next guy ready to go. Another question about Wake Forest, Roberson kid, the wide receiver. What makes him so effective in such a difficult matchup where he's productive against all different kinds of opponents? Yeah, well, I mean, I got a lot of respect for him. I think he does a really good job in his route running, and he's got great big hands. You know, makes, you know, not to take away from him, though, what they do on offense creates a lot of one-on-ones. You know, because of what Ira said, you know, just w with, with the RPO and the meshes, I mean, they, they're, they're extremely well coached. Um, they do a really good job of executing the run game. They don't give up a lot of TFLs with just how they block it. Um, so, you know, it, it creates space for those wide receivers. And they're playing with an extremely confident and veteran quarterback that puts the ball, you know, where it needs to be put. So I think all the wideouts in that program definitely um, 
you know, definitely see the results, you know, based off the run game, based on how the quarterback's been playing. Um, but, you know, they do a nice job. Coach, Sam Hartman looks like a guy who just knows how to efficiently run the offense. Now, on, on paper, it doesn't look like there's anything flashy about his stats, but you mentioned he's a veteran presence back there. What does it take on defense just to disrupt a guy who kind of works within his means and doesn't seem to make the mistakes that you know most of your defense are, are trying to create in a game? You know, the, the good thing about a veteran and a coaching staff that's been at the same program for a while, like, like Coach clausen has been with that program, is – you know, number one, they feel really comfortable with what they're doing. But also it allows us to get a good beat on this is who they are, this is what they want to do, and then you can teach offense to our guys. You know, just like this is where the read is, this is what they're looking for, this is what we're going to present to them so that you can play off of that in a better way on defense, if that makes sense, you right? So, you know, the, these second, third level read stuff that the offenses are doing, you know, it's based and predicated off how the defense reacts. And if you can educate your guys on that, you, you know, you can put the ball at least in an even court and it comes down to making the play and you don't play behind it all the time on defense. So, you know, I think it works both ways, you know, um, but to take nothing away from, from their quarterback, I think he's, you know, he's super accurate, he's super intelligent, he's tough, um, and you see the ball get put in the right places most of the time. Thanks, guys.